what you're seeing is a fear of change. So the noise that you're getting at the periphery, the Peter Schiff's of this world, for example, is not that Peter Schiff doesn't understand that crypto is the future. It's that he doesn't want it to be. Because it's technology worse than bag bias. It's a fear of change. Right? We're going through the fastest change in all history. So for people to understand what I'm talking about, the internet grew at 63% a year from 1990 to 2000. The internet was 140 million users at 1997-ish. Crypto is about the same now. But the crypto digital asset space is growing at 113% a year. This is the fastest adoption of any technology in all recorded history. People don't want to believe it. How can my very system of money change in front of my eyes? What, what does the central bank mean any longer? What does it mean for my savings? What does it mean for, you know, the thing that I've railed about all the time is gold, that'll save you from all of this. And now there's something else. Everyone has to drop so much of their kind of outward facing belief system. And it's hard. So that is the, that will slowly change over time. But generally, the macro people who are broad-minded have entirely changed. As a macro guy, when you know you've got something fundamentally broken and there's only one set of outcomes, which is printing more money, we've got this low growth from this demographics and technology and all of these things that have been changing the world. So we've got, we've got low growth, massive debt, makes it hard to service the debt, increases the amount of printing, so therefore, these assets go up. But the real macro opportunity is to invest in the new world. We've just discovered the Americas from scratch. Why would you not buy that? Because it actually answers all of the problems. It's got the scarcity. It's got the ownership, the transference. It's a new system. It doesn't have the fragilities. And when we're talking about adoption, there's two ways we need to think about it. One is investors in it. So we can see Doge, for example, classic example of a one-side network effect. So price goes up because a bunch of investors, but if they go, it would all disappear. But Ethereum clearly had more developers working on it than any other ecosystem, and that was growing, the rate of change of that, and the number of applications. So now you've got this kind of perfect storm of network effects. And that helps me understand stuff like Doge as well. I mean, people are like, this is a you know, scam, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, it's not. If you've got $40 billion of value in it from investors alone, then all somebody needs to do is figure out the other side. And you've got a massive network. And the first person to do that was actually Mark Cuban. Mark said, fine, you can use Doge at, at Dallas Maps. And then Elon had seen it as well. And clearly he's working on something to do with it, whether it's streaming car payments or whatever it's going to be. It's very clear that it's going to be used. And that's fine because you become less cynical about what these things are and you can judge everything by, is it a real network effect or not? Um, and that that's made the space much more investable, much more macro, much more understandable. So ETH is money. And I'd seen that because we commissioned for Real Vision a, a kind of headquarters in uh, crypto voxels, which we're just, you know, we're going to release soon just for the fun of it. And the architects, we paid in ETH and the land we paid in ETH. So it's like, okay, well, ETH is clearly money, but ETH is technology. We know that too. Um, ETH is also a platform of which people are building a lot of different applications. So whether we talk about community tokens, NFTs, DeFi, a whole bunch of stuff, um, DAOs, they're all going to be on ETH. Now, will ETH be the only chain? But no. Clearly, people use Solana for stuff, people use, and there'll be a multi-chain world of which there'll be a few giants and a long tail of stuff. And that's pretty normal. Um, but ETH has got really interesting because of this. And then, you know, I came out with a piece in Global Macro Investor last month called The Greatest Trade. And, you know, here's my macro head on again, is okay, we've got this adoption of that is kind of exponential, right? It's growing at least twice the, twice the rate of, of Bitcoin. And it's by far dwarfing the rest of the space. Then the EIP-1559 comes along and that reduces the supply. So that's clearly bullish for the price. But the point being, 
is that you'll never ever in your entire life ever again and ever beforehand were given 100x in an asset that's already up 2 million percent when you look at Bitcoin. You've never been given this. And you can basically choose anything and it will go up. So once you do that, you don't, you're not scared of making the wrong bet and it stops you being tribal because within that, you know some of them are going to be amazing. You take the pressure off, you own a, you take some basic bets, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, a couple of others here and there, and then you can just have a basket of stuff. And over time, decide, okay, I quite like that, or that's getting faster adoption. So then you start to look at like, Solana is clearly getting adoption. It's clearly happening, and it's clearly happening in the price. Okay, so do, do you want to own a bit more of that? Maybe. You know, is Polkadot getting to where it should be? Don't know yet. But it's worth keeping an eye on. You know, there's a there's a lot of stuff. And then, so that's how I tend to deal with it, is forget trying to model it and look for fair values in this. It's like, as I said, you can be a three-year-old kid and be given a, a box of names of cryptocurrencies and take 10 out, and you will literally make 30 times your money over the next 20 years, and next 10 years. I'll approach macro and a lot of macro guys do. You've got this big thesis now, which is 100x the space in the shortest period of time. So then our job is, okay, how do I add alpha? Where do I find the better bets? Now, there will be probably 50 tokens or assets that will outperform Ethereum, but they're riskier. I don't know what they are. I have no, no, I have no ability to choose them. When you look at Ethereum, it has all of the elements of the lowest risk, highest quality trade. And it's, you know, it's a rewarding ecosystem with rewarding people in it because, you know, there's a social element to this. There's a cultural element to this movement as well. And it's rewarding. So it's, it's a good space to hang out where you feel comfortable with the asset. You understand how many smart people are working on it. So when you say to me, oh, there's a risk in 1559 getting done, my answer was the, the risk is like minuscule. And so I didn't care about it. Like ETH 2.0, it's minuscule. Why? Because there's a lot of very smart people, smarter than I'll ever be, working on it. So the probability is extremely high. And that's what that makes what makes ETH so rewarding.